Assalamu alaikum. A very good morning to all of you. Uh, my name is Dr. Daniel Ahmed Kamal and I'm a third year resident of cardiac surgery at AFIC Rawalpindi. Uh, today I'll be going over a very pertinent issue of mitral valve repair and my tap and my topic for today is mitral valve repair a 5 year experience at AFIC NIHD by Brigadier Dr. Nasir Ali. Mitral valve repair has become to be known as the gold standard of treatment in patients with mitral regurgitation of virtually all etiologies, including rheumatoid mitral regurgitation. Uh, data has shown that operative mortality, late survival, valve-related complications were all lower after repair, although rate of reoperation was slightly higher. Earlier, the better is a new concept, and it has been shown that operations before onset of symptoms, ventricular dysfunction, and atrial fibrillation is associated with long-term survival uh, following repair similar to age-matched controls. Um, why is repair better than replacement? Well, that lies in the fact that during repair, there is enhanced preservation of valvular structure and LV function, especially if done by experienced and wise hands. Um, there are minimal complications of anticoagulation therapy post-repair, fewer thromboembolic complications, and as we avoid the implantation of a prosthetic valve, um, lesser risk of endocarditis. The concept of a core team is uh, critical and uh, was central to the success of our program. Um, in our institute, a core team was formed by a cardiac surgeon and anesthetist with special interest in valve repair and echocardiography. Institutional guidelines were formed and innovations for sustained and predict predictable valve repair surgery in our population, the rheumatic population, were, uh, were made. Methods and materials. The study design was a retrospective analytical study uh, carried out from 2016 to 2020. Um, study population included 75 patients, 55 of whom were females and 20 were males. Um, inclusion criteria included all patients with severe mitral regurgitation, including myxomatous, ischemic and rheumatic diseases. Um, exclusion criteria included patients with multiple valve disease, um, those having mixed valve disease, extensive calcifications, leaflet thickness more than 5 mm, a small mitral orifice, or with any element of uh, stenosis. The mean age of the patients was 23. Um, here is a pie chart showing the distribution of etiology of uh, our study population. Uh, vast majority of patients had rheumatic mitral regurgitation. Few had myxomatous and uh, further few had ischemic uh, regurgitation. Preoperative assessment was carried out in detail um, via transthoracic and transesophageal echocardiography. Um, assessment of leaflet coaptation, the mechanism of the mitral regurg, leaflet prolapse, um, the leaflet thickness, flail leaflet segments, amongst many other parameters were assessed in detail. And extensive preoperative planning of the surgery was carried out. Um, at this point, I think it's uh, fair to mention Carpentier's classification of mitral regurgitation. Um, type 1 lesions are uh, lesions in which there is normal leaflet motion, but um, mitral regurgitation is present, uh, such as in uh, dilated cardiomyopathies or ischemic cardiomyopathies. Type 2 lesions are lesions uh, in which there is leaflet prolapse or there is excessive motion of the lesions. Uh, this might be due to cord D tendon ruptures or papillary muscle ruptures. Um, type 3A lesions are lesions in which it, there is a uh, restricted leaflet opening or uh, there is restricted motion of the leaflets during um, diastole, um, such as in typically in rheumatic heart uh, diseases. And type 3B lesions are restricted leaflet closure, um, such, as seen as, uh, such as seen in uh, ischemic MR or patients with severe regional wall motion abnormalities. Um, the surgical, surgical technique that we carried out was as follows. Um, median sternotomy was done, followed by aortic and bicaval cannulation. Anti-grade cold blood cardioplegia was delivered, uh, and the mitral valve was exposed um, through either the superior septal or the transeptal approach. Careful examination of the mitral apparatus was carried out, and a variety of procedures, which I'll be shortly uh, explaining, were carried out. Rigid anandoplasty rings were used to give our uh, repair stability. Intraoperative assessment was done through TUE uh, to assess the uh, correction and to see if any further tweaking was needed. Um, essentially, uh, mitral valve repair follows two fundamental principles. Uh, number one being the restoration of a good surface of leaflet coaptation. At least five to eight millimeters of coaptation is considered essential for a durable repair result. 
and two correction of annular dilation um the repairs can be approached through a number of ways um anterior leaflet lesions can be approached via cusp shortening or resuspension of the prolapsing leaflet segment um either by uh, ptfe neocordy or cordy transfer uh, posterior leaflet lesions can be approached by a quadrangular or triangular resection here we can um, see in this uh, graphic image um transfer of secondary cords to the free margin of the same segment um and the use of a polytetrafluoroethylene neocordy to reconstruct uh, support of the free edge of a prolapsing segment again a uh, pictorial demonstration of a uh, construction of a uh, polytetrafluoroethylene neocordy to prevent prolapse uh, of a leaflet, leaflet segment posterior leaflet lesions uh, as mentioned before can be approached by a quadrangular resection um uh, remnant leaflet margins such as can be seen here are then usually readapted using interrupted sutures um in our particular setup uh, bigger and nasser ali came up with his own innovation called uh, the nasser's technique or posterior leaflet sliding plasty um the concept behind um this particular technique is uh, repositioning of the posterior mitral leaflet in a new zone of uh, coaptation uh, where coaptation is more effective with the anterior mitral leaflet um 3o proline sutures are run through the posterior annulus from one posterior commissure to the anterior commissure and they are lifted um and the pml is repositioned in a new zone in which coaptation is more effective if the pml is uh, rigid or fixed then superficial interrupted incisions can be given along the posterior annulus to allow for its movement um in our setup as alluded to before annuloplasty rings were used to give the repair stability and um various types of annuloplasty rings are available uh, throughout the world rigid and flexible in our setup uh, we preferred rigid rings um they are uniplanar and in our uh, experience provided better intraoperative experience and durable postoperative result um research has shown that they can be a cause of sam but uh, we have yet to encounter mr sam in our clinical experience um results from the study showed that there was uh, no mortality uh, mean aortic cross clamp time was 46 and a half minutes uh, mean cardiopulmonary bypass time was 47 and a half minutes patients were ventilated for a period of 6 to 24 hours median 12 hours and mean hospital stay after surgery was 7 days early post operative morbidities included one patient who required pericardial drainage and two patients who developed left sided pleural collection requiring pleural aspiration um we'll now go over some 2d echo, uh, 2d echo images before and after the repairs um this is a case of posterior mitral leaflet prolapse as can be seen uh, the posterior mitral leaflet prolapses into the la resulting in uh, an anteriorly directed uh, jet of severe mitral regurgitation um the posterior mitral leaflet was repaired uh, resulting in um, these particular images post repair Uh, where we can see there is minimal uh, regurgitation uh this is a case of anterior mitral leaflet prolapse um this is a uh, image before the repair showing that uh, the tip of the aml is prolapsing into the la um resulting in um ex uh, resulting in a posteriorly directed jet this time uh, of severe mr on color doppler the anterior leaflet was uh, resuspended using ptfe neocordy and on color doppler there was minimal regurgitation in early systole here once again we can appreciate minimal regurgitation after after the repair um next we'll look at um some images post repair uh, pre repair images of these particular patients were not available um posterior mitral leaflet prolapse was present in this patient and uh, after the repair we can appreciate um in this short axis view uh, adequate mitral orifice area the mitral valve area calculated by planimetry after repair was uh, 2.57 
and by VTI method it was 2.4 uh, showing adequate um, orifice area. Um, here is a four chamber view of the same patient uh, showing the anterior leaflet which is acting as um, an efficient trapdoor against which um, and very good interleaflet distance measuring more than 15 millimeters. Again, minimal uh, mitral regurgitation is seen post repair. Um, as, alluded, as alluded to before, vast majority of our study population included patients with uh, rheumatic mitral regurgitation. Uh, this is one such patient. Um, and as you can see, the AML, even in this image after repair, has a hockey stick appearance and uh, somewhat restricted uh, posterior leaflet motion. This patient was approached uh, with uh, posterior sliding annuloplasty, the Nasser's technique and uh, commissurotomy, resulting in um, minimal regurgitation post repair, um, a very nicely opening valve on short axis as can be seen here, a mitral valve area by planimetry of 2.21 cm square and mean gradient of 4 mm of mercury after this surgery. Um, patients were followed for up to one year at intervals of three months, six months, and 12 months. Uh, one, patient developed, one patient with ischemic MR developed moderate MR. However, um, upon follow-up, no clinical deterioration uh, was seen. All patients showed excellent outcome with minimal to no regurgitant volume. Low-dose warfarin was discontinued after six months in patients who, who, who were in sinus rhythm. And six patients um, who presented with persistent or intermittent atrial fibrillation uh, were given lifelong warfarin therapy. In conclusion, our study shows that mitral valve repair is an excellent procedure for mitral valve regurgitation of all etiologies. Um, it confers numerous advantages over valve replacement routinely practiced in Pakistan. Um, however, uh, further long-term follow-up is needed to a certain long-term recurrence of regurgitation. Thank you.